best mark the turning point. British black footballers had come of age. They were now to be found all over the park. And here's Regis. The court square is in a chance. Oh, he did it superbly. In goal, defending, in midfield, and in attack. Cox is going for here. Oh, he's outpaced them. Cox is there. Oh, yes. Number two for Cox. But racism remained a basic fact of life for aspiring black players. As Cess Pod discovered when he began his career at Bradford. Here's Pod though. I made my debut and um, as soon as I walked into the pitch I suffered racism abuse. <laughs> but I didn't even realise it at the time. I just took it for granted because it happened to me at school. You know, people shouting, oh you're black B and you know, people used to sing Bradford's got a nigger. I wasn't happy. Sometimes I want to go and I don't want to go because I didn't like what to saw or what to hear. My dad um, never missed a game at home and away. Whether I would have continued if my parents weren't as supportive, I don't know. But it was tough, you know, and um, they, I suppose they took more, m more of the, the, you know, the pain and suffering than I did. They were malicious. They, must not, they didn't like him. And so they're glad to say any... And, I think they were trying to put him off as well. A friend rang me and she said, Jean, did you see what happened this time? They spat him right in his face. I said, you shouldn't have told me that. No, well, my father wanted me to, uh, wanted me to do something else because his thoughts was at the time, you know, that you never make a, how can you make a living out of playing football? But my mother was very much, if it's something that you want to do, then you go out there and do it. Luther Blissett, who was to become one of the biggest stars of the late 1970s, began his playing career at 4th Division Watford. I would have been 15 when I first got involved there and uh, I was the only black player there. But all I wanted to do was to play football. Often when you get involved in anything, you're the only black face there, you know. So it, it's never anything that fazed me in any way. Blissett coming in. Blissett's career really took off in a cup game against one of the big boys. The game that really brought my name to prominence because it was against Manchester United. It was at Old Trafford, and Manchester United was riding high in the first division then, and Watford were in the third division. And for us to go to Old Trafford and win, and obviously I scored both the goals. Blissett headed the 83 season goal scoring ranks. He earned the golden boot for his 33 goals and attracted the attention of one of football's stellar clubs. Graham Taylor said to me, they can talk to you if they, if they, they put up a million pounds. You know, you know, he says, well, you know, and that should be the end of that, really, you know, because, um, let's face it, who's going to want to pay a million pounds for you? <laughs> As he said, you know. But the mystery club came back with the asking price. You more or less laughed in his face, did you, when he, when he mentioned AC Milan? Yeah, because um, moving from Watford is, is, is not really... One of the things that ever crossed my mind. There was a rumour that AC's scout had meant to sign a different black English player, John Barnes, but had mistakenly bought Blissett instead. For Blissett, facing 60,000 fans of the Red and Black Brigade, the atmosphere at Milan was light years away from Vicarage Road, Watford. When this opportunity came around, I just, it was one of those I looked at and I thought, I've got to go, because they they man-to-man -man marks that would make me get better at what I do go and survive in that football, you know, then I'll be a better player for doing it. But in Milan, Blissett's golden boot became a lead balloon. The striker found goals very difficult to come by. And Italian fans even less forgiving than English ones. You're always going to get one or two here and there that are going to chant things at you, but initially when I went out there, it was, didn't bother me because I couldn't understand most of it. <laughs> With Blissett abroad, there was a need for another black role model in the English game. Has he got the poise? Ron Atkinson's West Brom was one of my favourite sides. I remember going to see them and they wore their change strip, which was yellow and bright, bright green. And I remember thinking, God, they look just like Brazil. And they played like that. They were a fantastic side to see. I mean, Cunningham and Regis together in full flight would have eradicated anybody's prejudice, you know, in the course of 90 minutes. Cunningham 
Royce pass players so easily, doesn't he? Regis is in there. Laurie Cunningham played football like people in the black community would expect a black player to play football. Here's Cunningham for Albion. He was probably the most athletic player I've seen, and he had so much style and grace, yeah, well balanced. Oh, nice reverse ball to Regis. A very visual player, beautiful to watch. Laurie was a bit of an introvert uh, off the pitch, um, and because of that, people got the impression that he was quite aloof. On the pitch, he was a tremendous extra field. And they're on the attack again here with Cunningham making a break and Regis in the middle again. Cunningham's skills could seduce the most hostile of fans, as he showed one day after scoring twice at Chelsea. And they all got up and they booed these two big gorillas in front of me. One turned to the other one and said, hey, but the nigger is good, isn't he? And you could see then the emergence of people recognising, hey, there's a skill factor. There is something here that we've got to respect even though we want to abuse it. Now Baker, Williams got inside him, but he's well too long, but here's Regis. Regis was outstanding for more than just his striking ability. He got the he has. He's so big, uh, but he's not um, intimidating in that. Gentle, softly spoken, you know what I mean? Just everything that's perfect about, like, somebody you just say, yeah, that's my big brother, he's just so cool. What struck me was the size of him. He looked more like a heavyweight boxer. And I'm sure Cyril wore shirts too small for him so that he could actually accentuate his build. Uh, but when you saw him stripped off, he was an awesome size. He was quick, couldn't run above 60 yards. He, he might tell you different, but I promise you, 60 yards was his limit. Um, but he was quick and he was strong. He was just like unstoppable in his heyday. And I used to say, I just love to do what he's doing right now. started into a very, very good side. So the primary thing was uh, that I produced, uh, the team produced the goods in terms of playing well and scoring goals, and the affection rose from that, really. It was more than just affection that Regis produced in the West Bromwich crowd. It was adulation, and it was colorblind. One of the main moments was that goal he scored. Here's Robertson. Got the ball, turned from the halfway line. He just taking it well on the chest. Two players was hanging off his shirt, so turned them easily just because he's so strong. He's done a lovely piece of control. And then he blasted it right into, like from about 25 yards out. Oh, and what a great shot! That is the main thing I remember about him. Regis taking it well on the chest and a lovely piece of control by Regis. Oh, and what a great shot! Oh, one of the goals of the season. Cyril Regis. The final member of West Brom's formidable black trio was right back Brendan Batson. Really good firm tackle by Brendan Batson, who came from Cambridge, followed the manager Ron Atkinson. Go on, Mick! Brendan will fill him for you. I always felt I had the ability to play top flight football. Um, West Brom were a very exciting team. Not bad match, mine, is it? Ron was um, playing very, very attractive football, as he did uh, at Cambridge United and as he did throughout his uh, managerial career. In an Atkinson team, defenders didn't just defend. What a magnificent goal by Batson! Atkinson's watchword was entertainment. He brought a touch of glamour to the muddy Midlands. One of the first to see his job as marketing, not simply management, Atkinson took from his black trio a flash of inspiration. The three degrees were, were, were very popular at the time. They were in the papers and everything, and they, they were doing a show at the, lunch, at the night out in Birmingham. Ron had the idea of inviting them down here. Um, during the course of a conversation, Ron sort of said, well, we've got our own three degrees. They came down here, lots of publicity. 26 years later, you know, people always remember the three degrees. I've heard these guys sing in the shower and they're nothing like the three degrees. You know? Probably went on a bit too long, um, but at the time it certainly gave West Brom a, a, a certain national exposure. I didn't like the comparison, to be honest. Um, they, can, they could play. I'm sure Big Ron, if we weren't good enough, wouldn't have played us. And Big Ron would say the same thing. If you don't perform, you're out of sight, no matter who you are, what colour you are. He did a lot for the advancement of black players because 
um, he showed that you could have a number of players, black players in a team, and you could rely on them. Pressure again for Batson from Reeves. I think we were just um, happy to be where we were and proving to a lot of doubters that black players um, were here to stay. But for football's three degrees, the game would come to an end. Laurie Cunningham made a high-profile move to Real Madrid and then to Manchester United. But his glittering career was increasingly interrupted by injury. While in Spain searching for a new club, he was involved in a fatal car accident. I had a call that Laurie had died in a car crash on, uh, on the Saturday and uh, it broke my heart. In the previous year, literally, um, Laurie and Cyril um, had a, a minor accident in the same spot. Um, Twelve months on, you know, he doesn't walk away from it. Death has a, a, a deep effect on anybody, especially someone who's very close, and you start questioning your priorities in life, what's most important to you in life, and uh, because of his death, primarily, I became a born-again Christian. I owe these guys everything for me to be able to come and express myself exactly how I am on a football pitch. By the end of the 70s, black footballers were competing for the game's highest honours. Justin Fashionu, a former Barnardo's boy, was the first black player to win the coveted Goal of the Season award. My very great pleasure to present you with this marvellous silver salver for scoring the Goal of the Season. Thank you. Ryan, Fashionu. Oh, oh, what a goal! Oh, that's a magnificent goal! Well, I think we bring a little bit of colour to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if we, there's more people like myself and Cyril who are in glamorous positions and score a few goals, you're going to get more and more coloured people wanting to play football. On the strength of his performances for Norwich, Fashionu became the first black million pound signing in the English game moving to Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest. Well, it wouldn't just sit right for him. And his, his promise was not realised there. But another Black Forest player would maximise his talent and make the most significant breakthrough yet.